Okay, um, thanks very much everybody and welcome to our Year 8 Curriculum Information Evening. It's lovely to see you all and um, thanks very much for, for coming along this afternoon. Um, we know that we haven't run these kind of events previously at the school, um, so uh, I know this is a, a, a new thing for, for parents and carers, but we think they're a, a really useful addition to the calendar and uh, being able to give you th this information so you're really clear about what your child will be studying um, throughout year eight. want to reassure you at the beginning that uh, we are going to be, even though we're going to be giving you a lot of information um, this afternoon, you don't need to try and memorize it, you don't need to try and make notes as we go along. All the slides and the recording of the presentation will be available on the website from tomorrow. Uh, so for the next hour or so, you can just hopefully sit back and, and relax and just listen to what's being said. But um, if you need to go back and double check any details, uh, please just go onto the website tomorrow. Now, in terms of um, what we're going to present to you this afternoon, I'm going to begin by giving an overview of the curriculum and what that looks like in year eight. Um, I'll then hand to Mrs. Black, one of our assistant head teachers, who's uh, got responsibility for, amongst other things, learning and teaching. And she'll talk about what learning looks like at the Radcliffe School, not only in the classroom, but also importantly, what home learning should look like. And then we've got representatives from each of our three core subjects. So Mr. Kirk, uh, Ms. Aidan Waller and Mr. Watson, who are respectively from the leadership teams of English, Maths and Science. Obviously, your child will be studying um, a broader range of subjects in year eight, which I'll mention in a moment, um, but there isn't time to fit everybody in. So we're just focusing on uh, those core subjects um, this afternoon. Also in attendance, you'll have um, seen them welcoming you on the door. We have Mr. Lunt, um, who, as you know, is your child's year manager, and Miss Arnold, um, who again is a, one of our assistant head teachers, um, has a dual role here tonight because Miss Arnold is not only the senior leadership link to year eight, but she's also in charge of our interventions um, and our tutoring program. So if you do have an interest in registering uh, your child for tutoring or some specific intervention, then please make sure uh, you speak to Miss Arnold or Miss Radcliffe um, and they will be able to give you the details of that. Okay, um, before we do talk about the curriculum in year eight, I want to take a moment to reflect upon the GCSE results that the school uh, achieved this summer. Uh, you may have seen these in the press or you may have had a look on the website um, to, to check them out. Just to say, I mean, not going to read through all the details there and all the figures, but um, we were really, really pleased with the overall performance of our year 11 cohort who've just left. There were some students who did fantastically well, uh, achieved lots and lots of, uh, of top grades. Lots of students made really good progress from where they started when they joined us in year seven. Um, and those results and those outcomes, they not only compare very favourably to the local averages from Oldham and national averages as well, but um, many of them are amongst the best results the school's ever achieved. So, as I say, we were really pleased with them and I think it's just evidence of the uh, really high standards we have at the school and the good quality of education that we provide for all students. So, moving on then to the um, Year 8 curriculum. Uh, we have a, a curriculum intent statement, vision statement on the website, and there's um, an excerpt from it there. Uh, again, I'm not going to, to read it out, but it's just to say that we do have what we think is a really ambitious curriculum for all students right throughout every year group at the school. Um, and, you know, we do believe in the transformative power of education, and we think our curriculum is very broad, very balanced, and at each year group, uh, it gives students the important knowledge and skills that they need to progress and provides a firm foundation for the next step in their education. In terms of how we um, organise the curriculum and organise the timetable in year eight, you should be familiar. About, uh, sorry, you should be familiar with this from year seven, uh, but it, I think it's important to emphasise the point. So students are split into two sides E and I. So your child will either be in 8E or 8I. Um, want to stress, it's very important, E and I are equal in terms of, of ability. So there isn't a top half of the year and a lower half of the year. Both E and I are um, exactly equal in terms of ability. E is slightly larger just because we have 11 teaching groups in the year. So E 
has six classes on that side and I has five classes. So that's why there's a, a slight imbalance in numbers. And all students in the year have access to all curriculum subjects. So regardless of what group they're in, regardless of which half of the year they're in, everybody studies exactly the same curriculum. And the way we organize that curriculum is outlined on this slide. So we group our subjects into blocks. So there's a literacy block, numeracy block, a practical block, and then PE sits outside of those uh, in a block on its own. You'll see the numbers there. They're the number of lessons per fortnight um, that your child will study in each of those subjects. We block the subjects together just because that makes the timetabling more straightforward. It means we have fewer split classes um, and so on. But um, to confirm, the, um, if the child is in a particular set for English, then within that literacy block, they'll be in the same teaching group for the other subjects. So whichever group they're in for English, it'll be identical for history, geography, and religious studies. Similarly, whichever maths group they're in, um, that will then dictate the group that they're in for science, French, music, and so on. So that's how uh, we organize the timetable. So, uh, and it's perfectly normal for a child to be in a slightly different group from one block to another. So they might be in 8E2 in the literacy subjects and 8E3 in numeracy. And you know, that's very common that we have that combination. I mentioned before that we've only got time this evening to give input from our core subjects, but we do have detail about all subjects on the website. So if you go onto the website, um, follow the links from curriculum or just put the word curriculum into the search bar, it will take you to this main page and then you can go into year eight and then you can look in detail about all the different subjects. So all the subjects from that previous slide, there's videos and uh, documents that show exactly what your child will be studying uh, within that particular subject. Um, there are some key dates for you to be aware of. So year eight, parents evening, the main parents evening, that will take place next April. Um, so that's the date for your diary, the 27th of April. And year eight, we'll be doing end of year assessments in June. So the uh, fortnight that's uh, earmarked for year eight to do their assessments is the 15th and 26th of June. So obviously it's important that students are aware of those, that families are aware of those, and that students do the, the right type of preparation. We will be sending you progress reports three times this year. So you should expect those to arrive mid-December, early April and early July, and they'll uh, give information about attendance, attitude to learning, and some of them will also give uh, information about your child's progress in the subjects as well. So th that's uh, when you can expect to hear from us with regard to reports. Okay, um, I'll pause there and I'll hand over to Mrs. Black to talk about learning. Okay, good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Um, so I'm just going to spend the next sort of five minutes or so talking to you about what learning looks like in the classroom and then also what learning looks like at home because actually that's a, you know, that's something that probably affects you more uh, because it's outside of the classroom. Um, so I'm not going to read all of this, but it links to the statement from the curriculum. You know, being passionate about high quality learning and teaching underpins all of the things that we're going to be talking about and being really committed to sharing that ambitious curriculum with all of our students underpins everything that we're going to be talking about this evening. So in terms of lesson structure, I think this is useful for parents to see. I share this with staff. It's shared with students that this is what a lesson looks like. And it is really important that across the subjects, there's still a lot of consistency because we need our students to be able to focus on the learning and not, you know, wondering about expectations. So all the lessons are really carefully planned and adapted to suit that group, whatever group your child's in. Um, they wouldn't be expected to be sat with their friends because it's about learning and it's also about being part of a cohesive school community. So they should be expecting to be seated according to the teacher's decisions around ability and need. You know, we'll always aim to start lessons in a really positive way with a member of staff at the door because it's really important that there's, you know, strong relationships and a good climate for learning. All of the other things that we do in terms of checking uniform and asking students to remove their coats are so that we focus in on the learning in the lesson and don't spend time uh, with things that distract away from that. Um, I've shared this in the original form. This is up in classrooms and it's actually quite helpful, I think, for parents to see. So if you look at any of your child's books or you talk to them about their lessons, these are some of the things that will be part of that. 
So we really encourage our students to take pride in their work. They've got a sticker on the front of all their books and folders that just reminds them about those basics of presentation and why it's so important. So you should expect to see well presented, well cared for classwork. If I move across to the, uh, to the right as you look at the screen, you should expect to see lots of red pen in the book. And that red pen indicates that when the teacher was giving some feedback and some information, your child was taking part in that, they were engaging, they were um, self-assessing their work, identifying mistakes at the time rather than later. So you should expect to see red pen in the books. Now we've got a feedback policy rather than a marking policy. So you shouldn't expect to see lots and lots of green pen in the books. You shouldn't be expecting to see huge written comments and lots and lots of ticks because we know that's not the thing that makes the difference to students. What makes the difference is quality feedback and that will look different in different subjects but things you could look for in books will be um, perhaps class feedback or perhaps some detailed feedback on one piece of work that's going to make the most difference. Now the blue pen that you see in the books that will show that your child took part in uh, mad time, make a difference and they improved their work based on feedback. Could be a whole lesson, could be redrafting a piece of work. And then just at the bottom of the slide, we've got a real focus on literacy. So not just in English lessons, this is in all lessons so that students are able to read and write in each of their subjects. And then the last part of this is about learning at home, which I'm going to talk to you now in a little bit more detail. So we've moved from being a frog school to uh, using Satchel One to show my homework. And we think it's so much better already. So it's better for parents, it's better for staff and it's better for students. So I'm just going to share some of the expectations around this. So you can see what I've asked staff and you can also see what I've said to the students themselves. So students will always be given seven days to complete a piece of home learning. That's really important because in, you know, in busy family lives, not every day will be available to work in the same way as others. So they've got time to make those decisions about when they do the work. There'll be routines around setting and collection of home learning. So some of the subjects tonight will be able to tell you what day home learning is set in their subject. And obviously students will be able to check their work. A reminder and a second chance will be given. You know, we accept that home learning is slightly different to in-class learning, but we know that if we've given seven days and we're really clear about expectations, that should support a lot of this. So core subjects who we've got here with us tonight will provide um, at least one home learning opportunity every two weeks for Key Stage 3. Now that says at least, so they might set more. But it actually asks you on Satchel 1 to say how long a piece of home learning will take. So that's quite helpful in terms of students working out how much they've got to do. Uh, other subjects, they must ensure there's at least one per half term at Key Stage 3. And again, there might be more than that. And it's depending how often the subject sees uh, your child. And uh, there's also music practice and there's also reading that we expect our students to do that's part of this. So what students need to do, and I've asked this of students as well, is they need to log on to Satchel One Show My Homework. They need to use their normal logins that they use in school. And they need to do that at some point every day and just look at what they've been set. The student uh, dashboard is really user friendly. It brings a task list. It shows their timetable. It shows what's been set, what's overdue. So that's really easy to access. We ask students to complete that home learning on time, but to ask if they need help, either ask in school or send an email to their teachers and really try and keep up to date. You know, the idea of giving the seven days is not so that there's one awful stressful evening when it all needs doing. It's so that there's time to plan in when that work needs to be done. And we do expect students to try their best. So what can you do to help? Encourage them to do those things that I've just said, you know, to check. Uh, there's a free app that parents can download and all the information's already been sent out. And I encourage you to do that. You can have the app on your phone. You'll get little reminders when work is set. You'll get reminders if work's overdue. Uh, and there's a code that's been sent to all parents for you to access that information. So I encourage you to do that. Um, but just help them establish in a routine. You know, if you can make somewhere available for them to work, um, make a time during the day available so that a routine forms around learning at home. And then lastly, for me, um, you know, we all learned a lot from the time when we were working at home um, and a lot of our students really struggled in terms of barriers to technology or barriers to learning because of technology. We have got a laptop loan scheme in school. So if at any point your child hasn't got access to a suitable device, there's a form on the website. If you just put laptops in the search bar, fill it in and you can borrow a laptop from us so that your student is able to work at home. So it's not means tested, it's needs tested. So we will just check that a student needs it, that's fine. And while we're able to do that, we're more than happy to lend those devices out. We won't ever ask students to print work at home. We don't think that's reasonable. 
to ask families. So if it's paper-based, they'll be given the paper. We won't be setting work that requires a lot of additional resources um, because actually, again, that puts a lot of stress on families and budget. So we will think really carefully about the learning that makes the most difference to students and set that. Um, that's it from me. Uh, you'll hear from me again at the end. and I'm going to hand over to Mr. Kirk from English. Yeah. Uh, if you if you search for Satchel One, it'll find it. Right. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> okay. Good. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, it's nice to have you all here, and thank you for for giving up your time on such a, an awful uh, Thursday evening. The weather's not the best. Uh, my name is Mr. Kirk, and I'm a second in English, uh, and I'm going to talk to you in a little bit more detail about the uh, the English curriculum. So firstly, it's to say that year eight is very much a progression of what the students do in, in year seven, which, which is logical. Uh, they've had the year now to get used to the school, to get used to our way of, uh, of doing things, both in English and, and across, across the board. So we see and we've planned a really, really clear progression that helps push students along in terms of what, what we want them to do and what we want them to achieve in English. Uh, so I'm going to talk you through a little bit about, about what we offer. So we start with the gothic um, and the reason we do that is it follows a, a clear thread our curriculum all the way through key stage three so in year seven we started with the iliad and the myths of, of, of the very first pieces of literature in the, in the western world and um, we ended with romantic poetry and in the history of literature romantic the romantic leads nicely into the gothic so it's a really engaging really interesting way to start year eight so we start with a text called The Body Snatcher, which is a short story by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, obviously a really famous author of the 19th century. This is what your children will be doing at the minute uh, in year eight. So they'll be studying that. It's a reading scheme. It's obviously quite challenging as an 18, a 19th century text, but there's lots and lots in there. It's nice and short. Um, so it's, it gives uh, staff the time to really go through it with the students and make sure that the, the students have the key skills and knowledge that are going to help them and going to take them forward in English. This is available online. If you type in the body snatcher, Robert Louis Stevenson, you can get yourself a you know, PDF online copy of it. Have a look at it yourself. And again, it might be something just to support that learning of what your, your children are doing in school. Uh, we keep reading and writing nicely uh, mixed together in English. Obviously, they're the two most important facets of, of the, the subject. Uh, so we move on to crime and, uh, crime and punishment writing uh, scheme. Which is really, really interesting. We start with uh, crime and punishment in the 19th century, supporting what we do with the body snatcher, but also moving on to the modern day and making it kind of contemporary and, and modern and contextualized for our students. So moving on to things like knife crime, issues that 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 our you know our children will be aware of in the 21st century world that we live in today. Uh, later on, we move on to war poetry. So building that cultural capital uh, with Wilfred Owen, one of the great 20th century British poets. And looking at that and building in comparison skills for the first time. So again, it's looking at a range of texts, but also building in those key skills and key knowledge that they need in order to achieve in English. So in that case, the, the, the comparison. Uh, furthermore, we move on to Animal Farm, which again, building that cultural capital, a really, really important novel uh, for all students, all young people to read and to engage in the world around them. So really, really interesting text. It's much, much longer that they have longer to do that because the, because the text itself is longer. And again, that leads nicely into some dystopian writing. So we're trying to encourage our year eight students to, to question the world around them and, and look at those, look at how they, they can use their influences in order to shape their work which obviously is so important in English. Um, you'll notice if you look at your child's timetable, uh, there are some separate English lessons timetable. So one of those is a grammar is a grammar lesson that's once per fortnight. Uh, we know that your children miss a lot of face-to-face -face teaching, obviously the year five, year six, I suppose it'd be at primary school. So these grammar lessons are really, really useful in, in supporting your child with the, the basics of English and the building blocks and the foundation of English. It doesn't just help in their English lessons, it helps in, in lessons across the board. And again, it's something that, that you can speak to your, ch your children about at home and ask how, how that grammar, grammar lessons are going. And again, it's that kind of progression model where we can really see them build on, on what they know and what they can do, but using it as a building block in order to support other work as well, which is really, really important. We also have library lessons as well. And I know a lot of you will be familiar with this from last year. So um, all the students should have a book uh, that they've chosen from, from the library that's appropriate for their level. So they do, we quiz, we test, so we know exactly what where they should be in terms of what they're reading. We give them a bit of latitude in choosing books that we think are going to be engaging for, for them as well. 
but it's all about pushing again and testing ourselves and us as a, as a faculty being able to monitor where your child is because as we all know and i'm sure we'd all agree the more students read the more successful they are um not just in their gcse's but also later on in life as well so it's about building that that kind of as, as a key component and key part of of their lives really hopefully for some of them um so uh our summative assessments we've moved to three uh now per per year previously uh we've done a few more but this time we've really focused on the the, the parts of this the curriculum that we think are the most important to assess so transactional writing so that's based on the crime and punishment uh text uh, so the idea of looking at a range of, of letters newspaper articles and asking students to reproduce or to create one of their own using using what they've the features that they've learned i think it's really really important and again it is something that comes up in gcse writing as well so i know it's not a prep we're not talking about a preparation for gcse in year eight but again there is a clear point of, of why we're doing that and how it links to later learning uh, we've also got reading assessment based on war and conflict poetry so that's bringing in that element of, of comparison as well which is so important in english not just in key stage three but also in key stage four and then finally an extended response to uh, to to animal farm so we, we focus more on checking kind of what we call uh, component knowledge so like the smaller bits of knowledge um, and the smaller building blocks of knowledge that link to the wider piece but within this again it's that progression and building that, that we can really assess where our students are so, so that when we come towards year nine and later into our GCSEs, we know exactly what our students can do and what we need to do in order to push them on further so that they can succeed. Um, in a, and that's not to mention as well, in every English lesson, we formatively assess. So we, we've always got lots of questioning, lots of uh, links to, to, to sort of prior learning, lots of memory platforms. So if you ask your students, what uh, your, sorry, your children, what they were studying, you know, last term or last half term, they should know that and they should be able to give answers on that as well. So we, we, we do that all the time in order to make sure that knowledge is, is, is secure and current for the students. Uh, so learning at home, uh, we keep it really simple in key stage three. Uh, we have a lot of lessons in English. Uh, so 20 minutes of reading every day. So that's a really easy check, obviously, for, for parents at home to making sure that your child's do some, doing, doing some reading, at least 10 minutes um, at home, as they'll have 10 minutes in their English lesson as well. Um, they all have books from the library. You know, they, they, they should all have them now. I think they've all had library lessons. So if they don't or you... you they say they've lost it and obviously you can get in touch with your child's teacher or with myself and we'll get that uh, we'll get that rectified there's a spelling rule as well which is every fortnight um that you you know again that's set on satchel one now so it'll be it'll be there when you when you download the app um and it'll you'll be able to see the spellings on there so again it's about key rules keywords that are commonly misspelled from our experience for key stage three students and it's just really really important obviously you know, to improve that literacy and improve improve spellings further. Any additional home learning will be set as well uh, in order to cultivate those learning habits. And that'll pro probably come later on in the year as they've, as they've got a little bit more developed and, and advanced with the text that they're studying. Um, so yeah, how can you support? I mean, you, you know, obviously coming here tonight's a massive help. So thank you again for, for, for being here. Um, encouraging your child to read, read at home is, is massively important. I mean, I, I, can't stress that enough not just as an English teacher but as somebody who's, who's worked in schools for a long time now and I can see the impact that literacy has on all subject areas it's not this is not just for English it's for everything the reading age required to access GCSE papers is 16 and they you know if they if they're not at that level by the time they're in year 11 they're going to really really struggle to succeed across the board for GCSE we can we monitor the reading level we we monitor reading ages through the accelerated reader program so it's really really important to get into those habits now so we know that you, what your child needs in order to access it uh, uh, when we do start the gcse's uh, make sure your child brings a reading book to school every day um you know obviously checking the bags or, or, or asking them even um check that they're learning spellings which is every fortnight uh, and contact class teacher if you have any concerns i mean you know, I'm available. All email addresses are available easily enough on the website. So if there's anything at all that you want to ask, your child's teacher will be absolutely fine to answer questions. I'll be fine to answer any questions at all. Um, you know, just just ask us and we'll, you know, we, we all want the same thing. We all want to work together. So we're all here to help. Um, and that's it for me. So I'm going to pass you to Miss Aiden Wally who's going to talk to you about the maths curriculum. Thank you.
Okay, uh, good uh, afternoon, and uh, thank you again very much for coming. Uh, it's great to see uh, people. I recognize uh, sort of students that I've taught and recognize some familiar parents as well. So thank you very much for coming. Um, so, um, obviously in year eight, in year seven, students were taught uh, the white rose scheme. Now this scheme is used in primary schools as well. So many of the children uh, coming to us have already met White Rose. Uh, it's a terrific scheme, and the work that we do in Year 8 builds on uh, the content covered in Year uh, 7. So at the moment, the students are being taught uh, ratio and scale. Uh, really uh, good number topic, a very important topic, and uh, as um, we've heard, you know, sort of, continuation, it links to future topics in Key Stage 4. And this uh, sort of journey that we are, are moving along, uh, you can access that. Uh, if you want to go onto the White Rose website, uh, you can see for yourselves what is being taught. Uh, it's really easy to use. You can uh, just sort of click on ratio and scale, and you will see the progression, the small steps that your a child will be covering. The really uh, good thing about uh, the White Rose Scheme, it's all about mastering, you know, not moving on until you've really understood the concept, that fact. Because without understanding, you know, that concept, that fact, it's difficult then to apply it to a different context or to use reasoning to work out, you know, what comes next. So we really focus on uh, fluency. And a lot of the time, you know, we sort of are checking that out. Checking that out, you know, by engagement within lessons, making use of whiteboards to check that every child, you know, is able to answer that question uh, correctly. So uh, hopefully that explains the reason for the scheme. Um, we assess, uh, you know, every half term. Every half term, you know, we will have finished uh, a couple of those topics shown in the previous slides. And we want to sort of check how well, those how well our students have done, how well your children have done. So every half term, there's a summative assessment. We need uh, a calculator because one of the papers, okay, requires a calculator. The other paper is a non-calculator. And students will sit uh, two papers on the, uh, generally uh, every half term. In addition to that, you know, we don't want to wait until the half term is over to find that you know, students, your child you know, hasn't understood. So every two weeks, we uh, have a recall test. It's a very fluency-based uh, test. It checks on the components that we have taught. And your child will have either done their first green sheet, the first recall sheet, last week, or they're about to do it, you know, uh, this week, or they may have already done it. And we mark those, and looking at, you know, what students have got right, okay, we can say, well, that's great, but things that are still a misconception, we will work through those misconceptions before we move on, because as I've explained, you know, mastering uh, that knowledge, that skill is really, really important to future uh, progression. Uh, and there is a test, uh, as you can see, an assessment, you know, almost every uh, half uh, term. The reason why there isn't one in half term six is because we've just really, uh, you know, kind of done enough assessments there and there's not much of the scheme left. And we'd like to think that we're going to use the time to do some enriching uh, activities. So for us, uh, homework uh, is a must. Okay, it's absolutely important. Students who put in the time, and by that I mean approximately one hour, will really see the benefits of improving, you know, their, their attainment. So we would really, you know, please to announce our move to Sparks Math. It's a fantastic website. If you've ha had children in school with us who are older, and you might have heard them mention the word Hegarty maths. So we've moved from Hegarty uh, to Sparks. There are 10,000 support videos, 10,000 support videos, okay? Every single uh, component is explained. 
it's really important that children, you know, don't kind of just rush to do the questions, okay? You must watch the videos, students, okay? If you don't watch, then really you're unprepared for what's coming on. Now, the good thing about Sparks is that it wants students to write down answers, okay? Not just type in, but actually write things down. So every student uh, in year seven, all the way to year 11, has been given a red maths book, okay? So your child should have that red maths book at home. Now, if for whatever reason, you know, your child says, oh, we haven't got it, not a problem, okay? Just ask your teacher for another one. And the reason for that is that you have to write down uh, some of the answers because in this uh, new home learning platform, it will check, what did you get for question 10? And if you've not written it down, okay, and you get the type in the wrong answer, it'll make you repeat, okay? So you've got to make sure that you're on the ball. So writing things down is really important. Now, it's dead easy. We're going to set homework, and it's already been set, okay, on Wednesday. Wednesday is every day for every child, okay, at the Radcliffe School. Teachers cannot forget because it's already programmed in. And students can't say, oh, mum, dad, carer, my teacher didn't set homework, they forgot. That will be an untruth, okay? Homework has been set for the rest of the year. Okay, so students must do their homework. It's so important, okay? It's a chance to work independently, okay? And really, you know, familiarize themselves with the concept. So the homework for this week was on Wednesday. It's due in again on Wednesday. So how can parents support? So thank you again yeah, for, for coming, okay? The conversation that we're having is really valuable because hopefully it's giving you an insight uh, into maths. How can you support? If you go on White Rose, there are parents help pages. So you can help your child. You know, if they're not sure, okay, there are parents help pages. And they're explained, okay, really clearly. So if you, okay, are a bit unsure about maths yourselves, don't worry, there are parents pages that will talk you through. So you can be that expert and help your son, daughter. Now, we really need every student to come equipped. We need every student to come with the right equipment. We need a range of pens across the school, okay? Black pen for writing, red pen for marking, blue pen for, for correcting when we're doing math time. So we need the pens, but in addition to that, we need all the stationery, okay? So we sell the stationery, okay? But you can buy it from, you know, any shop that you care to go, go to. We don't make any money out of it, by the way, okay? What we buy is what we sell, okay? Please, if you're gonna buy a calculator from elsewhere, please can you make sure that it's a Casio calculator? Because that's the one that the scheme recommends and uses, and that's the one that we as teachers are using. So it's much easier for us to help, you know, if the child has got the same calculator rather than a different one. And if you buy a calculator, please keep the, the information sheet safe, okay? Because it's like a manual, okay? So just as you fix your boiler at home, and if it doesn't work, you need the manual, you need that as well, okay? So um, please, can we have um, everyone well equipped? The other thing I would say is that um, on Sparks, there are 10,000 videos. So if your child says to you, please can I have a bit of help, you can watch the videos with them, okay? So if you thought, think, well, actually, I was taught maths in a different way. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, if you watch the video, you'll know how, okay, we are explaining that math. So please make use of Sparks for yourselves. Um, if there are any issues, please do contact um, the class teacher or obviously contact uh, me. Now, I've put there a positive mindset. Now, I don't know why, but sometimes parents, adults are scared of maths. They always say, oh, I wasn't very good at maths, okay? And that creates a real negative, you know, kind of impact, doesn't it? Because what we're saying is, oh, perhaps I'm not good at maths, and because you're my child, you might not be good at. 
Everyone can be good at maths. So let's be positive, okay? We love maths, okay? That's a mantra I want you to repeat as you walk out. Now you can also help just by doing, you know, a little bit of mental arithmetic with it. So students, this uh, is for you, not your parents. What is nine times by 10? Hands up. Oh, come on. Yes. What did you say? Nine times by 10. 90. Okay, one more then, okay? Nine times by seven. Nine times by seven. The same person, somebody else, come on. Oh, can you hear something back? 63. So parents, you could just check. Do your children know their times tables? Really important. Or if you're going shopping and you give them a five pound note and they spend one pound 50, well, what's the change? Help them to work it out, okay? That really, really supports numeracy, which is an absolutely key element of maths. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna, oh, forgot to say one thing, sorry. We've got a puzzle here. Okay, there it is. Oh, it's not showing on yours, sorry. The puzzle here, um, worth a terrific prize, okay? But only the first five people can have a prize. So please pick up this booklet as you leave. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Don't worry, I'm not going to give you a test. <laughs> um, the science curriculum is completely decided for us by the national curriculum, obviously. Um, and so really our job is working out how it is that we're going to navigate our way through that in the best way possible to support your, your children. And I, in year seven, we looked at what we decided were the most fundamental and basic ideas in science those ideas that were going to be constantly referred back to, constantly built upon as we moved from the beginning of Key Stage 3, the end of Key Stage 2, up to GCSE and, and beyond. Year 8 continues that process. Um, obviously, we're looking now at some slightly more complicated ideas, um, particularly moving into ideas that are perhaps slightly more abstract and not as... Um, easy to, for, for the students to, to understand, but we are still keeping it at a relatively simple level. Um, the very first topic that your students will be stu studying at the moment is a very good example of that, where we start off by looking at magnets, something that is very, very familiar to the students. They're probably quite happy with that, but actually by the time they get to the end of that topic, they're looking at electromagnets and understanding how uh, electric bells work and things like that, and it, it's actually much, much more challenging for them. Um, we then move on to ideas of things like heat, heating and cooling, um, how heat is moved around, conduction, convection, radiation, um, insulation, how we stop heat from moving around. We've done that so that your students understand, or your children understand, why it is that you're going to ask them to stick an extra jumper on rather than turning up the gas this winter. Um, we obviously are trying to mix up three separate subjects in science and we regularly move between them. Um, chemistry this year really does start to get into what most of us would recognize as real chemistry, doing chemical reactions, understanding how different substances interact with each other, looking at things like chemical equations for the first time, uh, symbol equations, starting to use those and starting to look at groups of chemicals, things like metals and acids, and seeing how they react and uh, work together. We can then take that and start using that in some of the biological chemical reactions that happen. So we can take the information that we've used in the chemical reactions and start applying it to what our bodies do with food inside. So there's this natural progression and natural flow as we move through. So food, as we eat it, gets broken down in chemical reactions inside the body, and the students will see those parallels with the chemistry that they've just done. And then our bodies use those, uh, those products of digestion in producing our own energy, building our own tissues, and hopefully they will start to see those, those links and knit it all together so that it actually all forms one big idea rather than lots and lots of little ideas. Um, Abstract ideas, sound and light, waves that are not easy to, to sort of recognize for, for what they are. 
are difficult for students to, to get a grip on, but we'll take them through it, we'll take them through it carefully, and by the end of it, they should be, should be confident with that. We can also start to explore some of the really big ideas that students will recognize. Um, most students these days are aware of climate change, and we can start to look at how scientists are trying to tackle these problems, what the difficulties are of tackling these problems, what the effects will be if we don't tackle these problems. And um, similarly with things like the Earth's resources, we will start off by looking at the structures of the structure of the Earth, what the Earth actually looks like, where we get these resources from, and recognizing that the Earth is actually the ultimate source of all these things. And if we want to run out, we've run out of some of them. In the same way as we earlier on in the year looked at the idea of animals making their up. Uh, eating food and then using that to produce their energy, we will revisit this later on in the year with plants and doing the same thing. So we'll look at photosynthesis, the chemical reaction that plants use to produce their own food, and hopefully the earlier work there will support your students and it will be familiar. And at that point, they should be quite confident with taking what is a very abstract idea and being able to um, see how it links into other areas and understand it to quite a, you know, quite a, a decent level. Uh, and we'll finish off looking at plants and, and plant reproduction and how it is that it, um, you know, how plants reproduce. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Our assessment is very similar to um, maths and English. During lessons, you will see regular assessment by students, by staff, looking at students' work. This is to inform our teaching. This is not to grade your students. So if you see work that um, you might be a bit worried that it looks like they've not got very much right on it, the chances are that what that means is that the teacher has identified that as an area that the class need to improve on and so will be built into future lessons to revisit and to tackle that area. Where we do uh, formal tests is every half term. Now, depending on the exact units and the length of the half terms, because they're not all exactly equal, it might fall just before the half-term holiday, it might fall just after, but at half-term, your children will have a test in science, and those grades will be used when we look forwards at setting and, and ideas like that. Um, we will also use that for reports that get sent home and uh, when, you talk, when you come and see, see us on parents' evening. So when you speak to your science teacher on parents' evening, you can be assured that the grade that you're your child has been given is a direct result of the tests and the assessments that they've done every half term. Again, like the other um, core subjects here, home, uh, homework will be set every two weeks uh, in line with the school policy. Um, we, a bit like maths, we have our own um, platform that we, or the, our own software that we like to use in science. Um, it's a program called Doddle. And it's, it's absolutely brilliant, um, mainly because it marks the homework for us. So that's, that's very nice of it. Um, the idea is it's very, very quick and easy for us to, to be able to set something that directly matches and lines up with what the students have been doing in their lessons. So we can set uh, a quiz. Your, student, your, uh, your children will go online, log into Doddle. They all have Doddle logins. So if they try and tell you that they haven't got one, their username is their Radcliffe number, and their password is either Radcliffe or Science. All right? Uh, and if, if you forget that, you can always email the teacher, and their teacher will, will tell you that or, re, or reset it for you. So the username and login are there. It will come straight up as a, as a piece of work that's been assigned for your, for your child, and they work through it, and they answer the questions. And again, we can use the feedback that comes back from that, those tests to make sure that this, all the students in the class are understanding the work to the, to the le uh, level that we need, and we can go back and look at things if we have to. Um, I'm very, very conscious that I'm now speaking to a group of parents who've come out into the rain to support their children on how to support their children, so I apologize for this. Um, the first thing I would like to just say to you is, uh, in a similar way to the, to the math software that Mrs. Aidan Waller was, was telling you about, Doddle is more than just a homework platform. 
So as well as the quizzes that we will be setting, your children actually have access to the full range of, of the Doddle software, which means that they can do additional quizzes if there's something that they're wanting to revise. So if they know that there's a test coming up, they can do Doddle quizzes at any time on the topics that are coming up in the test. Um, one of the areas that I know parents do, struggle, do sometimes struggle with is that they might not have done science for a, a very long time themselves. I'm not making any, any comments there about anybody in particular, but it's, you know, it can be difficult for you to remember the detail sometimes that's needed. Doddle comes along with, as well as the quizzes, there are videos and, and actual lessons on the platform. So if you know that your child is struggling, for example, with photosynthesis, you can just go on to Doddle, into the, put into the search bar photosynthesis, and it will bring up quizzes, it will bring up lessons, it will bring up videos, it will bring up animations, all things that your child can use at home to help them get through something that if they're, if they're getting stuck. Um, apart from that, the best thing that I think you can do as a, to support your child in science is actually just to talk and share science with them. Um, there's always great excitement every time a new David Attenborough set of uh, documentaries comes out. And just sitting and watching that of an evening with your child um, is absolutely wonderful because the number of children we get coming in the morning after or, or even six months afterwards and saying, I saw this on telly and it's something that links into the lesson you, is, is absolutely incredible. You wouldn't believe it. Um, science is constantly in the news. Your children should be able to tell you why your gas bill is going up so much this winter because they're covering it in science. They should be able to tell you about climate change, what the effects are, and that's all over the news. So just discuss it with them, and they will, they will tell you as much as you are telling them half the time. So if you can engage with your children like that, um, I would point out that we're just outside Manchester where there are several world-class museums of, of science, um, you know, which if it's raining, that's a nice day out, isn't it? Um, but apart from that, there's lots of other ways you can help. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so just finally, um, just a few reminders really. It's really, really important that for your child to do well at school that they are here all the time. So we need to be aiming for 100% attendance. Uh, it's really important. They can't learn if they're not in the classroom. Um, a reminder about good habits. So I've talked about home learning. The subjects have talked about home learning. But, you know, the difference it can make, and it's been mentioned by the subjects, is huge. So thinking about, you know, controversial this might be, putting the phone away and actually having some quality time on the learning that's happening at home. You know, those good study habits are really important because two years, nine, 10 and 11, if you've already learned how to learn away from the classroom, it's much, much easier. And we know that because of the way we learn, it can't all be done in year 11. So revision isn't something that happens at the end. It's something that actually you should be doing all the time and finally it's just another reminder of all the support that's available in school you know you've seen tonight um our three core subjects and you've heard the three core subjects speak they've all mentioned what's available in terms of contacting these members of staff or the class teachers each of our students has got a plg a personal learning guide and they might be a really good person to contact because they've got kind of an overview and they've got a relationship with your child We've got our year manager here, we've got Mr Lunt, and we've also got for each year group an SLMT link, so we've got Miss Arnold for year eight. And these are all the people that are here to support your child and your child's education. So if there's anything at all that you are unsure about or anything that's causing a problem, please just get in touch and we are more than happy to help. We will be around at the end if you've got any questions now, but that's it from me. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a safe journey home. Thank you.